Protests are undermining Hong Kong. Among their targets is sovereignty. Some media reports highlight the word independence, causing people to ponder over the bond between Hong Kong and the mainland. Hong Kong has been a part of China since ancient times. More than 90% of Hong Kongers are Chinese, sharing cultural and historical links with the mainland. However, in recent months, repeated anti-China media reports give a false impression that independence is prevailing among Hong Kong people. Political uh, demand for independence in Hong Kong is a very small, minor one. I think there was some opinion polling recently, I think it was less than 10% or 8%. I think the vast majority of Hong Kongers realize and believe that they are part of one country, two systems, that China is their sovereign, that they have an autonomous uh, the status, and that they would like to protect that status. Most protesters are young, many born after the handover of Hong Kong to the motherland. They don't seem to share the national identity with their parents. A lack of education is perhaps the reason for this. The people of Hong Kong do not realize how vital China has been to their benefit. Its uh, raw materials, its food must depend substantially on China. Uh, but the young people don't know that. They're still reading the textbooks that they read before 1997. They still have a view of the world that is created uh, in, in, an, in an era long gone. Hong Kong has huge problem in the design of our education curriculum, both in the primary school, secondary school, and even tertiary. Given its limited space and resources, Hong Kong relies heavily on the mainland from electricity to fresh water and so on. Young protesters may not know that without the mainland, the city would barely remain functional. Since returning to the motherland in 1997, Hong Kong, as a special administrative region, enjoys a high degree of autonomy and freedom under the one country, two systems principle. The mainland serves as the backbone of the city's development. Many citizens still remember how Hong Kong survived heavy attacks on its financial markets in 1998. With the support of Beijing, the HKSAR government brought up 118 billion Hong Kong dollars worth of stocks and futures and eventually won the hard-fought battle to preserve the integrity of the markets. In 2003, Hong Kong was plagued by a SARS outbreak the central government responded with a special scheme to reinvigorate the city's tourism industry. It is indeed true that um, the central government has helped us weather many economic crises, you know, such as by sending us tourists after the SARS uh, crisis, as well as giving us a lot of renminbi business and insurance business, etc. The central government has always integrated Hong Kong into the country's overall development. These include the Closer Economic Partnership Arrangement and the Guangdong Hong Kong Macau Greater Bay Area Plan. Hong since 1997, Hong Kong has consolidated its status as a global financial center. It is the world's freest economy, the world's top IPO markets, and has one of the world's most active and liquid securities markets. Its GDP has doubled to reach nearly 360 billion US dollars in 2018 and the number of visitors rose from 10.4 million in 1997 to more than 65 million. China has been very um, supportive of Hong Kong developing its policies so that it can be successful. And China has given it a great deal of material support to be successful. 
However, national flags of other countries were seen flying among the protesters, with a handful of them even calling on the United Kingdom to rule Hong Kong again. Many countries would classify this as treason. The idea that um, they can uh, become part of America or Britain is, is, is not realistic. Uh, Hong Kong is part of China and will always be so. So the young people have to adjust to the reality. The Article 1 of the Hong Kong Basic Law states that Hong Kong is an inalienable part of the People's Republic of China. Как раз и Соединенные Штаты Америки с помощью своих представителей и с помощью пропаганды и с помощью интернета пытаются воздействовать на гонконгскую молодежь с тем, чтобы вы вызвать у них недовольство нынешней ситуации и постараться от увести, скажем так, за счёт вот этих вот действий, противоправных действий, постараться вывести Гонконг из-под влияния Китая, но это вряд ли получится. Because the fact is that Hong Kong is part of China. It's not part of any other country. The future of Hong Kong therefore depends on China and not any other country. No matter how much Hong Kong develops, the mainland will forever remain close by. And now the next period beyond this is to my mind the golden era for um, Hong Kong. Between now and 2037 is the time to really um, take advantage of the opportunities in the Greater Bay Area. We